Alrighty guys, it is time to get back into the Fruit of Grisire, and yes, the face cam is back. Yes, I know, unbelievable, right? I've actually managed to get a face cam on nearly all of my videos now. It's honestly, uh, would, would it be considered taboo to see my face? Probably. I don't know. Wait a minute, and welcome, my name is Shishi Anime, and welcome back to Grisire no Kajitsu, or the Fruit of Grisire. Now, the last episode, unfortunately, Nyan Nyako, uh, Miyarin, he passed away. He passed away in the car. So now we're giving um, Michiru as much time as possible. So let me just read that because I accidentally went over that. So, guys, if you're ready, I sure as hell am. There we go, got it. You give it sugar. Also, got the Sprite because I'm unhealthy today. I gave Michiru a little time to herself. She may be. Ma she may have managed to calm down a bit by now. I headed to the girls' room to check up on her. It's me. I'm coming in. There's no answer. I open the door immediately, but pause for a moment before entering as if expecting the cat to suddenly poke his head into the gap. This despite the fact that I disposed of his body only a few minutes ago. <laughs> Ridiculous. Again with the darkness? Let's start by making things a little less... Halfway through the sentence, my breath catches in my throat. Mitchell is crumpled awkwardly on the floor, almost as if she's fallen out of bed. Wait, what? I'm sorry, excuse me? There's a fine white froth around... Oh, God! Oh, hell no. Oh, no. We need to get her to a hospital right now. Uh, around her mouth. Numerous containers of Rimini candy lie scattered on the ground around her. I've been slightly suspicious about these these for some time now. But now it's obvious they're in fact some kind of medication. They're not actually sweet? Oh, no. She's overdosed. I, I just got back in this. Do you mind? Jesus. Oh, wow. It's obvious they're in fact some kind of medication. An overdose, is it? Lovely. I'll grab one of the lozenges from the floor and pop it in my mouth. The medicine quickly dissolves when I chew, leaving a powdery substance. I immediately spit it out and wipe my tongue with a sleeve. Not a particularly strong drug, but that doesn't make an overdose any less dangerous. Michidu, open your mouth. I push Michidu up to a sitting position and retch open her mouth with my fingers, pulling out a thick gooey lump of half-melted lozenges. She's choking. <laughs> Pipe down. Getting your stomach pumped hurts like hell. You know, let's try and deal with this here. <laughs> the area around her mouth coated with sticky saliva immediately breaks down in tears. <laughs> I just got back in this. You did a stupid damn thing just now. Expect a proper scold. Proper. Expect a proper scolding later. There's no need to try and bear everything all by yourself, understood? I'm here. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay, that was the first thing I get back into? Oh, boy. Yeah, get in that bed. So that was Chizuru's voice we heard then. Okay. Sorry, Chizuru. Mm. Yep, I'm not surprised now. I'm aware. I'll repay you for this soon. Hmm? Oh. It's alright, Michiru. You can sleep a little longer. Oh boy. Hold on, am I in the way of the text? Ah, dang it, I'm in the way of the text a little bit. So let me just, uh, small the s put s Ah, oh, God. I'm gonna put myself down here for the minute. Boop! <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna put myself down in the corner because I doubt I'll be in the way of anything down here for the moment. It's okay, Michiru. Alright, is it back to normal? Okay, it was. Okay, that was it. Okay. 
Yeah, there we go. Back up top. <laughs> yes, I can change it on the fly. It's amazing, right? I can actually edit whilst recording. Maybe she just wanted to avert her eyes from reality for a brief moment. Maybe she wanted to make a permanent escape from this claustrophobic box. Nobody knows Michidu's reasons. And now it's turned into a massive uh, load of trouble. Also, sorry if my face looks weird. I tried to give myself a bit of a cleaner style. I couldn't shave all my beard off because my damn razor was about to go. So, uh, yeah, it looks a bit of a mess. <laughs> sorry about that. I could speculate endlessly, but it won't get me any closer to a definitive answer. It might even be that the girl herself has no real explanation. Self-destructive behavior isn't going to change the world around you. Your pain won't make time run backward. Reality isn't going anywhere. Chisudu told our classmates that Michiru had collapsed from anemia. So she kept it a secret from everyone, okay. Letting them know about a suicide attempt would without a doubt have created a counterproductive uproar. I mean, how could we have expected the cat to be run over? Come on. At this rate, the girl's going to end up shifting from a suedo cindere to a sticky char sickly character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope you're alright. Morning, how are you feeling? Oh, that's a relief. After a few days of rest, Michiru's returned to her normal routine. At a glance, it's hard to believe she might have deliberately attempted to end her own life. The others were fairly worried, when, but when Michiru brought out the normal Cinderella song and dance, they apparently decided she was completely back to normal. Nah, she's definitely not. But I just made the promise to be there with her as well, didn't I? But I think otherwise. The girl's absolutely not the same. If anything, she seems like an entirely different person. To be perfectly frank, she looks like a lifeless doll acting out of fictional character. Yeah, even her words seem shallow. Right. Sorry. Oriai? But today Michiru strikes up a conversation from her end. After the incident, we've only had the briefest of interactions, so this comes as something of a surprise. Oh? What kind of compromise? Yeah, the last bit she said there was like, I don't need to be happy. As long as I'm alive, that's all that matters, is what she just said. Yeah, but even don't forget about the rest. Oh. That doesn't strike me as much of a solution. It's like closing your eyes and covering your ears with the debt collectors knocking your door. Who's going to pay the bill in your place? Yeah. I'm free to live by myself. What do you mean by that? Yeah, what is that supposed to mean? Uh, no. Excuse me, I don't remember changing your diapers. And if I thought you were a nuisance, I'd say so. What are you even talking about, woman? No, you don't. You don't, at all. No, you're the one who's misunderstanding here now, Michiru. Oh. Oh, hello, Sanji. When Sanji appears, Michiru abruptly changes her expression and hurls out an energetic greeting. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, you can tell it sounds so much more different. It's weird. I don't like it like this. <laughs> What's with that suspicious laugh? Hold on. Excuse me. Uh, was that really flattery? Hmm. けなしてはいません。事実なので。うん、オッケー。ほら、ゆうじ、けなしてないって言っ
Do a bit better now? Yeah, it looked a little bit better. There we go. We need some sunlight in here. Yes! Ooh. Come on, stop lying now. Come on. Oh, some liver later. Damn. I don't like liver. It's one of the only cuts of meat I don't like. <laughs> she was humming to herself then. I heard that. Mr. D, my friend, try not to push yourself. I like the fact that we're being really, really mindful of Mr. now. Like, we're actually trying to make sure she's okay. I think that would be wise. Mitsuru shuts herself up in her room for several hours, only emerging that evening, her face slightly less pallid, but she's still carrying herself a little oddly. Hey, you managed to calm down a little? Uh-huh. <laughs> Hello, Makina. <laughs> well, aren't you wearing it as well, Makina? Michiru starts in surprise as Makina at Makina's words. Seems to have only just realised that her choice of clothes is somewhat unusual for this time of year. I'd make a tactful decision to not comment on the matter, but Makina is a free spirit, bound by such concerns. Michiru is maybe Michiru may be making a decent effort to hide it, but she's in a disturbed, unstable frame of mind. The girl pretty clearly isn't capable of paying attention to her clothing right now. Of course she isn't. Nice, nice one, Michiru. Yes, exactly. Then why are you just just a just a habit? Okay. <laughs> まあ、まあ、二人とも。なんで、みちる、ちゃんと元気でやってるのいや、ちょうどいい。でも<笑><笑><笑> I'm sorry, what is that word? Shadow orgy? Shadow orgy. I've been alive for 22 years. And I've never once thought of putting the words shadow and orgy together. That's genius. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> God damn it. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 Shadow boxing, eh? She's been preparing for the battle. Oh, dang. <laughs> I see. Well, I wouldn't really mind, but... Before answering, I glance at Michiru out of the corner of my eye. There's a clearly unhappy expression on her face. And she's restlessly grinding her foot against the floor. Considering that tough act this afternoon setting me free or whatever, she looks distinctly jealous over me holding a mere conversation with Makina. She's gonna turn you under it, I swear. Alright, I'll play once you become a true expert at tagging shadows. Until then, content yourself with your image training. <laughs> Do it, soldier! Go! Oh, I'm pretty sure that's just your shadow. Hmm. 
そこの空き部屋で休んでくるわね。ああ、ごめん、ラビーソフのナイスルーナップ。あ、具合悪いの大丈夫いや、よろい。は、平気よ。心配はゴムよ。ラストショード。あは。今、発音変じゃなかった、うん、ゴムゴム。ウェ、ゴムそれじゃあね。ナイストライ。ナイストライ。お、松島さん。Yes! Yes! Give them to her! Give them to her! Now, quick! Encoding overloaded. Consider turning down the. What was that? Encoding overloaded. Huh. Okay, my、uh, recording device is having a bit of a heart attack then for a second. Sorry about that. Oh, she just wants to give them to her. I think my encoding was having a bit of a heart attack then, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on that. Michiru Teba, Mada Kanzeni Kachoga Modote Naimitai, ne, ne, Yuji, Yosu Mini Tahoga Inja Nai. Yeah, I'll check up on that. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I'll go. Come on, we're gonna have a word with you. Michiru, you alright? Answer me. <laughs> oh. You, hmm, you don't look so hot after all, Michiru. Let's. Okay. There's a car parked outside where I live, so if the engine randomly goes off, you know what it is. Mitchell grabs my wrist and unceremoniously drags me into the unoccupied room. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Why is that chatting? That's all three of them talking. <gasps> Whoa! Michiru? Hello? And that's a panty shot. Nice. <laughs> Where to go, me? You felt ruining a nice little moment. What's wrong? The others are worried, you know. Michiru mumbles a spectacularly inadequate explanation in a tear choked voice. I honestly don't know what she's trying to do. Stay. Uh, stay no, What do you want to exactly do? Kissing? Or other stuff? You want to do what? If you have something to say, then say. It. Kiss. She wants to kiss. Say what? What is this girl thinking? I can't stop. I stop by out of concern for her physical well being. She drags me in here for this, of all things. I don't understand you. First, you go on about how you don't want anything from me anymore. Now you're demanding kisses. She's looking at us like we're the last thing left. To her, that's special. Is playing pretend really going to satisfy you? I don't know. Well then. All the way. What's that supposed to mean? Michiru looks at me with an earnest expression and pleads her case. You were saying that you didn't want to be happy before, but now you want happiness. I decline. Why? You're just in a temporary state of mental agitation. Sorry, but I don't think. But I don't make a habit of playing with distraught women. Mm. You sure as hell don't look at it. You don't look at it. I can't help but let out a little tactless laughter. I guess the girl's trying to demonstrate she's the same as always by means of this incredibly strange Cinderay act. But seriously. Koko <laughs> is acting or pretend. Yeah, honestly, you really are an idiot. <laughs> 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 
Alright, since you insist that strongly, I'll play along. But is this really going to accomplish anything? Mm. A lot of stuff, is it? Hmm. Well, whatever. That works. I do have a lot of things I want to ask you. I pull Michiri close to me and bring my face to hers. Oh. Wow. When our lips touch lightly, a soft moan escapes from the corner of her mouth. Just as requested, I repeat gentle, affectionate kisses of the sort a loving couple might share. This is now adorable. This is now adorable. Something wrong? Your breathing seems to have gotten rough all of a sudden. <laughs> the Senlori bell has chimed for Michiru for the first real time! Nice. Still trying to pull the Sindre act, huh? In that case, we're going in for another one. God damn, Yuji, go on! As I press my lips against Michiru more strongly than before, I feel her body go stiff as a board. You said to go all the way, didn't you? I really will stop, if that's what you want. Oh. oh. She quickly catches the sleeve of my shirt to halt my retreat. <laughs> Didn't you just tell me to cut it out? <laughs> oh, I see. In that case, next time I won't stop even if you ask me to. This is now adorable. I love it. The girl's tough tone fades in and out at, ran at random. Feeling nervous, it would seem. I'm not in the way of her face, am I? I hope I'm not. Nah, I'm not in the way of her face. Nice. Nice. It's, no, you're slightly different approaches called for. Don't make me do all the work, Michiri. Try starting to kiss yourself for once. Compared to me kissing you unilaterally, a give and take exchange would be more couple like, don't you think? Oh, 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 that's adorable. Yes. <laughs> right, right. I bring my face toward Michiru and stop just as my lips are about to make contact with hers. Her cheeks flush a vivid shade of red. She seems taken. Seems she's taken the hint. She's done it herself. Oh! After a hesitant moment where her eyes flip back and forth, Mitchell softly touches her lips to mine. Lightly sucks against my mouth, then retreats. Before she has the chance to turn her face aside in embarrassment, I follow and kiss her in return. This is wholesome moments. Just get together already, please. We let our lips. We press our lips together again and again, alternating attack and defense. Me too. Oh. Whenever our mouths part for a moment, Mitsuri looks up at me with moist eyes. Well then, I reach out to stroke her cheek, then gently wrap my arm around her shoulder and pull her closer. Before I know it, Mitsuri's fallen asleep in my arms. But we can't exactly lie around here all day. Lift the girl onto my back and head for her room. Okay, there's definitely a scene there in the adult version. <laughs> there's definitely a scene there. Ah, oh, but that moment was pure. I love that. That moment was pure. Before I know it, Mitra just fallen. Yeah, but we can't exactly lie around here all day. I lift the girl onto my back and head to her for her room. I wait at Michiru's bedside as she sleeps, occupying myself with a book. I feel a little exasperated at myself for reading at a time like this, but it's the surest method I have to regaining emotional balance. It's not like I'm an indifferent robot. Sleeping with Michiru has complicated my feelings more than a little. There we go, so there is a scene there. When I look up from the book for the first time in a while, the girls awake and watch me quietly. I ask if she's feeling alright, prompting a quiet, it hurts. Yep, that was the first. That was the first! Oh boy! What? Did I knock you against, uh, something on the way up here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Damn. 
As she speaks, Michiru offers me a sincere smile for the first time in a while. <laughs> Alright. Alright then. We're done playing make-believe for the moment. So why don't you tell me what you've been hiding? I'll hear you out. But I lied my paper back to the floor, shifting my attention to Michiru's story. Oh, here we go. There's another me inside me. Okay, I'm going to move my face cam down the bottom because um, at this point, hold on, woo! Uh, my face might be in the way of the text, so I'm moving it down here. Wouldn't you know it? Live action editing. Never expect that from me, would you? <laughs> There's another me inside me. I'm not playing with words or anything. It really is a completely different person. My body doesn't belong to me alone. That really scares me, but it's thanks to her that I'm even alive today. Yep, here we go. We are going to find out more about this other Michiru. At last. <clears throat> she knows everything about me, but I know nothing about her. In that case, which of us has the better claim to be the real me? Ooh, but we're now finally in Michiru's backstory. I was born into a relatively wealthy family. My parents valued me highly, all the more so because I was their only child. They provided me with me with an excellent education, hoping to raise me into a worthy daughter. Once they could show off that with pride, one they could show off with pride. There we go. Although I was still a child, no, maybe that's it. Maybe it's because I was still a child. They brought countless tutors to home to our home to pack knowledge into my head. Like travellers stuffing all their luggage into one tiny overburdened suitcase. The tutors were all excellent in their fields, and they all charged heavily for their lessons. After studying with them, even the most uncooperative and dim-witted of children could be safely sent off into the world. So we was all private she was all privately educated. But I guess I was sort of a special case. It took a lot of time and trouble for me to learn the simplest things. When shown a perfectly clear example, then told, "Now you try, please." I couldn't even imitate my tutors properly. I've had that. I've had that before. That's that's a, that's. I know what she's on about. I understood what I needed to do, but when I tried to put that knowledge into practice, my voice would quake and my throat would go dry, even though I wasn't being threatened in any way. Tears would come to my eyes. Piano and violin, arithmetic and English, and the English alphabet. It was all the same, no matter what the subject. When I hesitated, my tutors would say, you didn't understand. I'll do it one more time and repeat the example faster than before. And then they would glare at me with eyes that said, get it right already. That really, really scared me. My body would freeze up entirely. My clothes would grow damp with sweat. By the time my molars began to chatter against each other, I could no longer muster the strength to even try. The tutor would scowl down at me, looking ready to burst into angry shouting at any moment. Yeah, that's a yikes from me, chief. The heavier their gazes weighed on me, the less I could move to all think. Time crawled past in empty silence. In the end, the tutor would simply sigh in exasperation and leave the room. It wasn't uncommon for my lessons to end with nothing more than that. Dejected and humiliated, I could only reflect on my own uselessness. And as I stood in my quiet room, stock still all alone, eventually I would hear an angry voice from outside. Oh! Again and again, violent words rattled against my window pane like fat drops of icy rain. I would cover my ears and wait for the storm to pass. It intended to go on for quite some time when the shouting finally ended and silence returned. My father would come to my room and push open the door. Michiru,どうした?先生に遠慮することはないんだぞ。お前はパパとママの子だ。やればできるんだからね。あの無能どもにはお前のいいところをちゃんと伸ばせるようにと、しっかりとやってたからな。今度からは頑張るんだぞ
When he held me against his broad, powerful chest, I smelled cigarettes and women's perfume. Never the same brand twice. It was comfortable, but also a little scary. I've got to do better next time. I can't let Daddy and Mummy down. That night, I knelt by the window, joined by my small hands together, and prayed to the stars. That was a spider crawling on my wall. I almost didn't see it. Get out of here. It was like a see-through spider. Yeesh. But poor little Michiru. She couldn't really get a handle on uh, things. To be honest, I was the same way as a kid. I was the same way, so I can sympathize with this in a way. I was very slow. I was told I'd never be able to ride a bike, never be able to speak, possibly never be able to write, never be able to swim. I had the whole shebang thrown to my mum. And I've denied all, I've, I've managed to get past all of them. Somehow or another. The next day was my regular music lesson. I sat perched quietly in front of a piano that had been shipped overseas from Hamburg, waiting for the teacher to arrive. In that moment, if somebody had snuck up and hit me and hit the keyboard, I might have tumbled right off the bench. My anxiety and fear must have shown on my face. When my tutor finally arrived, she closed the door carefully behind her and immediately came to my side. <laughs> Ah, oh, I actually had a teacher say this to me in a way, but they just called me a uh, uh, freaking retard. That's what they actually said, not in words. I was uh, five years old. I was five years old when I was told that. She spoke in a very gentle voice, so for the moment, the sentence didn't really register. But all too soon, I realized that she had spoken awful, terrifying words. <laughs> Oh, you're a charming lady. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. I'm sorry? The tutor struck me with a thin, stiff rod. The stinging pain of the blow lingered like a nasty paint. This is child abuse at this point. Oh, you're charming. You're a charming lady. Oh, I hate you. Yeah, but taking it out on a child? Taking it out on a child, lady. You are abusing someone else's child. And you are saying this. You are charming. Lady, lady, lady. You are a failure of an adult. If you so much as abuse a child and call them useless, a useless existence even. And this is a kid, not an adult. If it's an adult, that's a different thing. But this is a kid, no matter if it was a boy or a girl. This is horrible. You are a horrible person. I didn't want to say it. Even a child could understand how cruel these words were. But I was so terrified of being struck again, I squeezed them out anyway. Wow. That's child abuse. Yeah, let me give you some praise right there. Dang. She did actually say I'd have to kill you. I thought maybe that would have been hypothetical, but no. She's threatening to kill a child because she couldn't understand one thing. I understand the parents shouting at like somebody if their child doesn't get it and they're feeling like they're incompetent because they don't see the lesson. I get that. But this lady's saying she's going to kill a kid. A kid! A poor little kid who struggles more than she... Well, well, cognitively. I don't think she could have been serious. But my entire body shrunk in fear. I was so terrified that I couldn't answer. And since I didn't respond, she hit me again. Hi. Nah, this is totally child abuse at this point. Wow. 
From that day on, violence came to be known as discipline. Yeah, that's violence. That's not discipline. That is hitting a child in cold blood, basically. Damn. I had numerous tutors, but after that day, it wasn't long before every one of them began to discipline me in the same way. They all done it? Oh, come on. The female cheater might have told the others that I wouldn't tattle to my parents no matter what they do did to me. Their discipline grew more refined with time, developing into a kind of art. What does that mean? They found their ways to cause me pain without leaving telltale marks behind. Skillfully and thoroughly, they broke me in mind and Oh my god. These are adults hitting kids. And anyway, aren't the only person supposed to discipline your, a child their parents? They are acting as the child's parents. This is disgusting. It became impossible for me to look people in the eyes when I spoke. I was never good at holding lengthy conversations, but my responses grew shorter with every passing day. By the end, I was barely speaking at all. Even then, my suffering might have been slightly meaningful if those Spartan lessons had produced results. But no matter how hard I tried to please my tormentors, it never improved my evaluations. So even though you was hitting a child, she still didn't improve. That means the teachers must be pretty incompetent. I mean, come on. They're supposed to have a good reputation, right? And they're paid lots of money. And I don't know what's up with Mitchell having, like, maybe a slower development in uh, education to other teachers at all. But this is just cruelty at this point. My father dismissed the tutors in ones and twos over my terrible results until none remained. Please tell him you told them. They cursed me to my face before they went. Some even spat on the floor of my room because before stalking out. Yeah, a child's room. Oh, yeah, big person. Yeah, you are a charming human being. You spat on the floor of a child's room. It's not like she was trying to kill you or anything, or one was threatening to kill you. Wow. <laughs> まあ、なあ、かまめちゅる。ま、なあ、かまめちゅる。ま、なあ、かまめちゅる。ま、なあ、かまめちゅる。ま、なあ、かまめちゅる。ま、なあ、かまめちゅる。ま、なあ、かま
I kept the curtains shut through the, the through the day, throughout the day. Sorry, little by little, I felt myself slipping away from the world outside. Nothing I did turned out right, but of course it didn't. I was defective from the start. Clumsily and awkward as I was, I soon found the one and only thing I was good at. Letting time roll past in empty, uneventful silence. I would sit quietly in a corner of my room, not budging a millimetre all day. Simply drawing breath, that alone became something of a specialty of mine. Even a mollusk at the bottom of the sea probably couldn't beat me at staying still. That was all I had left to be proud of. I continued to live like a clam, but biologically speaking, I was a human being. My body grew larger, little by little, and in the time I stopped being a child, I was no longer allowed to shut myself up in my room doing nothing. I had to go to a place called school. And this is where we're going to meet the friend, right? Mm -hmm. The little mermaid who lived at the bottom of the sea couldn't speak the human tongue very well. By the same token, I couldn't really communicate with the other students. It didn't help that I was a clam, not a beautiful princess. Everyone around me could live a normal life. I envied them from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't study or make friends. Nothing, move, nothing moving around a little would get my heart screaming in with pain. Just keeping myself breathing was about all I could manage. At first, a number of my classmates made an effort to draw me out of my solitude, but I didn't know what to say to them. Most of the time, I just nodded my head and mumbled, yeah, with a stiff expression on my face. I inevitably... Inevitably, the people who approached me gradually gave up, and eventually, the class came to operate as if I wasn't there. Ooh, it was like a wallflower. Damn. That was kind of a relief in a way. Nobody expected anything from me, so I couldn't disappoint anyone. It was as though I was made of air. Even in school, I could return to my life as a clan. I thought that was just fine. Not bad at all. My parents made sure I went to school regularly. Probably thinking I'd at least have to communicate with other people there. But it wasn't rare for me to go an entire day without speaking a single word. Yeah, I know them days. I know them. Even when a teacher took attendance, they had just glanced in my direction, not bothering to call my name. As my free time increased, I began to think pretty regularly about the point of my own existence. Or rather, the pointlessness. Why was I going to school? Why was I even alive? I considered those questions at some length. Watching from afar, as my classmates laughed together and chatted enthusiastically about television, sometimes I would have to fight down the urge to burst into tears. They were so close. But I was separated from them by an insurmountable wall. Yeah, a wall that you put down yourself. Damn. Even a trash, even a trash can is useful to others. I was just taking up space. Why was I born in the first place? My parents had given me a cell phone, saying I probably need it as a student. There wasn't a single message or call recorded in the history log. The memory was clean, pure white. That phone must have been lighter than anyone else's. It was empty inside. Unless I kept a firm grip on it, it'd probably float up into the air, get pecked at by some passing bird and disappear with a pop. Like a balloon, goddamn. Ah... Uh, I want to die. In the end, that was my only conclusion. A year passed in that school, then two, and that was my only constant rock of truth. This one's a, this one's a harsh one. It really is. God damn. On a deserted rooftop of the school, school building, looking up into the blue sky that stretched out over the road to school, I longed for death. I simply didn't understand the point of continuing to breathe. Living every day as a non-entity is something like walking on an icy road in bare feet. At first it's scary, but soon enough your nerves are paralysed. You feel nothing at all. There's also an animal, if I remember correctly, that could die if it doesn't interact with anything for too long. We humans, we are social beings. And uh, it said that if we go for a certain time without having any form of human communication, we could go crazy. And in fact, that's how uh, mental illness can be born, or social withdrawal, as they put it. That damn crows are loud. Uh, it's 
put that down. Hmm. I simply didn't understand the point of continuing to breathe, living every day like this. As a non-entity, is something like... Yeah, I've read that, haven't I? You feel nothing at all. A good while later, when you realise this might be pretty bad, it's already far too late. There's nowhere to go from here. There's nothing to be done. You live every day of your life, frozen to the ground, choking on bitter cold air. Damn. <laughs> Might as well just die then. She actually went to commit suicide, didn't she? With that thought in mind, I began to head up to the roof during every recess period. Up there, the only thing separating this world from the next was a waist-high steel fence. Someday, I'll cross over that fence and become free. Someday, I'll escape into nothingness. Comforted by those thoughts, I waited patiently for the right timing. I waited for someone, God or whoever else, to send a sign just for me. I'd wrap my arms around my knees and sit, telling myself maybe today would be the day. Maybe... <coughs> Excuse me. Whew, sprite, calm down. Maybe today. The clouds would part for a ray of light, and a voice from above would say, Come, it's time. I would stare closely at the trains barreling past the station, wondering if the sign might flash pa past in the window of a carriage. But instead, I just sat by myself on that roof. No matter how long and patiently I waited, I never saw any signals. Nobody whispered the words in my ear. In the end, I was all alone, just like I was everywhere else. Every place was the same to me. I was in a corner of the room where I had been beaten terribly. I was deep at the bottom of the sea, where no light could reach me. I was at the end of the world, surrounded by all sides by silent walls of stone. God must have had been silly with something else, otherwise why wouldn't he fly over to me and speak the words? Oh, someone else is there. One day when I went to the rooftop as usual, I found a girl who had just, in that very moment, crossed over the fence. She was standing boldly on the very edge of the building, staring straight ahead. When I saw her, one powerful thought filled my mind. That's not fair. After all my anguished internal debating, all my suffering, all my waiting, I couldn't get myself over that fence. Why did this girl get to make it so easy? That girl was nothing, was going to kill herself. She was going to leap off the roof, fall onto the concrete below and end her life. It was obvious enough from the way she stood there, straddling the border between the roof and sky, arms outstretched like wings, to catch the wind, seemed almost to be enjoying herself. It wasn't a sort of pose you could make if you cared about your own life. Anyway, it wasn't fair. Why did she get to die when I had to live? I didn't have the first idea who she was, but it just wasn't fair. <laughs> Whoa. I was trying to shout as loudly as I could, but what came out of my mouth was a weak, spiritless sound, like the rasping of a broken old accordion. Did she hear us? It probably didn't help that I wasn't used to conversation, but my voice just wasn't coming out right. The girl quietly stared down at the ground far below, not even touching my presence behind- noticing, sorry. Uh, she seemed to be looking for the exact moment to jump. Maybe God had already given her the signal. Can she hear us though? I called out again and again, but she didn't seem to hear. Maybe I no longer even existed in this world? Maybe I'd slipped into some alternate plane of existence long ago and was just peeking into this world through an interdimensional one-way mirror. She ignored me so completely that it seemed possible. I called out to her. My... Oh, damn. My voice choked with tears, but even then, she didn't turn around. She sounds a lot like uh, the other Michidu. Oh, the girl's body went into spasms of shock. She looked like a wild animal with its fur standing on end. Damn. And then, as long, at long last, she timidly turned around to face me. Uh, 
えちょ、yeah. なんで泣いてるのっていうか、いつからいたの Oh, she was there for like a good five minutes. <laughs> 死ぬとかずるい Yeah, mutually speaking up. Eh? Do you go to? My tear stained face must have been a real sight. The girl lifted herself over the fence and returned to this side. She was wearing the same uniform as me. Unsurprisingly, she was clearly from my school. Whoa! So this is her friend! It's gotta be! She handed me a handkerchief and I dried my tears. Nothing like that had ever happened to me before. It was embarrassing. But it made me sort of happy. I didn't really know what to do next. Hmm.、Uh, that was kind of a hard question, actually. I just didn't want her to die. It's not like I was about to lecture her on treasuring her life or anything. I was just scared by the thought of someone escaping this world while I was still hesitating on the edge. So, <laughs> no. Hmm. What? The girl watched me as if observing some rare species of animal. I didn't have the first idea where to begin or how to explain myself. So after thinking it over for quite some time, I chose the simplest option. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Screwed up after all, huh? Guess I can't even manage a normal conversation anymore. The thought made me genuinely sad. I couldn't find my usual numb indifference. It felt like a harsh reminder that I didn't belong in this world any longer. <laughs> That's cute. Watching as I slumped my shoulders dejectedly, the girl burst into laughter. And although I didn't have any real evidence either way, I didn't feel like she was mocking me. Nah, she definitely wasn't. I was relieved. Happy laughter. It was relieved, happy laughter. The sort of laughter I hadn't heard in a long time. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do, so I just stood there quietly as she laughed and laughed. But no matter how patiently I waited, She just wouldn't stop. Much the opposite. After a while,、uh, she threw herself down on the ground and began to roll around, her roars of amusement even louder than before. I'm interested in her, what this girl's name is. Who is she? Who is she? Watching her rolling around like that started to get me in a kind of a silly mood myself. The moment I noticed a little giggle slipping out of my mouth, the dam seemed to break. I began laughing so loudly I surprised myself. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a wholesome way to start a relationship, just finding someone who's about to jump off a building. And you know what? I'm gonna say this is a good place to end off this episode. Yes, I'm saying this is the perfect timing to end off this part. I mean, now we. I think we've met、um, Michiru's friend, the other girl. The other Michiru, I believe, is this girl. Because. She was going on like she was her friend, and it looks like since she didn't have any friends, this would be the only reason she would have another embodiment in herself taking on her personality. And also, the way she spoke sounded very similar to the other Michiru. So I'm almost 100% that that's this girl. But what the hell happened with this girl for her to get some form of PTSD to make a, another personality altogether? That's the bit that's got me. I thought I'd have a good bit of my eye then. Sorry about that. But anyway, unfortunately, guys, I am all out of time for this episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want any more from me. And I shall see you in the next video. So, did you, guys? I will most certainly see you next time. Aw,、oh, but me should be getting friends, though. This is wholesome. I want to continue this one a bit more. Yay!